students welcome back today we'll be starting with science 2 chapter 4 environmental management the first page is actually revision of what we have already learned last year to revise a bit if you see we'll be learning about ecosystem what is an ecosystem the definite geographical area formed by biotic and abiotic factors and their interaction with each other constitute the ecosystem we'll be learning in detail about what do we mean by biotic factor and as well as abiotic factor if you see that in case of an ecosystem every factor plays an important role producers like plants are important because they produce the food with the help of photosynthesis herbivores like deer goat sheep cattle horses etc they feed upon the producers and they are also important predators like lion tiger which prevents the overpopulation of the herbivores are also equally important in an ecosystem sometimes we wonder that what are the use of dirty insects and flies and things like that but even termites and insects etc present in dung are useful to us however these organisms are important even if they are dirty they are responsible for cleaning the environment if you see in the page they have given you a particular word jivo jivasa jivanam what does that actually mean jivo jivasa jivanam means that one living thing is the food of another it's an important concept which can be observed around us if you are little bit observant for example take the example of lion deer and grass the lion eats the deer the deer eats the grass when the lion dies it is converted into manure nutrients for the soil which is again consumed by the grass now let us study this particular chart which this chart is about the components of ecosystem now we saw that the two components of ecosystems are abiotic component and biotic component abiotic component means non living things in the environment or in the ecosystem they are further subdivided as physical factor and chemical factor now what are the physical factor air water sunlight soil mountain rocks etc what are the chemical factors the chemical factors are nutrients salts etc that is available in the environment these chemical factors are again subdivided based on their origin either they are inorganic or they are organic inorganic can be hydrogen oxygen nitrogen calcium iron sodium potassium zinc and other minerals which are available an organic organic means anything which has originated from living thing that is either from plants or animals so the components of organic substances are proteins carbohydrates and fats now on the right hand side we have the biotic components what is the meaning of the word biotic biotic means living things now living things can be plants animals or microorganisms they are again for the sub classified as autotrophic and heterotrophic auto means on its own trophy means food so autotrophy or autotrophic animals or plants are actually the one who can prepare their own food now we know that who prepares their own food it is the plants green plants specially they prepare their own food with the help of photosynthesis so below autotroph we have producers below producers we have the blank is green plants on the right hand side heterotrophs heterotrophs are the plants and the animals who or microorganisms who are dependent on the autotroph for their food so they can be animals they can be decomposers now animals below that that blank is also animals decomposers are like microorganisms who decompose the plants and animals after their death decomposers can be microorganisms like fungus bacteria etc now these animals can again be primary consumer secondary consumer and tertiary consumer based on their level of feeding 
all these things we have learned last year in detail this was just a recap of what we learned food web food chain etc now they have given you an example paddy is cultivated on large scale in various states of south india paddy is nothing but rice field paddy fields are frequently attacked by grasshoppers similarly frogs are also present in large number in the mud of paddy field to feed upon the grasshoppers and snakes are also present they are into feed upon their favorite food that means we have an ecosystem like a paddy field where we have taken example of just three things now here you can see the paddy field or the rice crop is the producers then we have the grasshopper which is the primary consumer then we have the frog which is the secondary consumer and then we have snakes which is the tertiary consumer now they have asked you a question that suppose hypothetically that all the frog population all of a sudden declines that means reduces now what will happen so the first question is that what will be the effect on the paddy crops now the answer is that when the number of when the number of frogs reduces then the number of grasshoppers feeding on the paddy crops will increase so all of a sudden the production of the paddy crops will decrease so what does it mean it means that means we are having the frogs who are eating the grasshopper now the grasshoppers in turn are eating the crops so suppose the frogs vanishes so what will happen the population of the grasshopper will increase now as the population of the grasshopper increases so they will be feeding more upon the paddy crops so the paddy crops will decrease second question given over here is number of which consumer will decline and the number of which consumer will increase now if you look at it who is reduced over here the frogs have reduced so number of which consumer will be decreasing obviously the snakes because the snakes eat the frog so if the food of the snakes are not available that means the number of snakes will reduce now who will increase the grasshopper will increase because what is happening here is here the frogs are not there so there is nobody to eat them what will be the third question what will be the overall overall effect on that ecosystem the increasing number of grasshoppers will destroy all the paddy crops also the number of tertiary consumer like snakes will decrease due to the lack of food eventually this will disturb the entire food chain and will cause imbalance in the ecosystem this was an example to show it to you that how even a small thing like a frog or a grasshopper is enough to cause imbalance in the nature and ultimately who will be impacted the human beings because we are the one who are dependent upon the paddy fields or the rice so even an increase in grasshopper or decrease in frog can indirectly impact us